starring Dick Foran and Gail Page in Alaskan Bush Pilots on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Gain Whitman. Now that we're about to enter the spring season with its showers and rain, let me tell you about Zealand, the DuPont Company's durable water repellent. When rainwear, sportswear, or children's clothes are treated with Zealand, garments shed water. And more important, they continue to give protection even after repeated trips to the laundry or dry cleaners. They do not need reprocessing. Zealand provides the weather protection that won't wash out and is an example of what the DuPont Company means when we say better things for better living through chemistry. The DuPont Company presents Alaskan Bush Pilot, starring Dick Foran as Bill McNarney and Gail Page as Mrs. Mack on The Cavalcade of America. Tonight, Cavalcade brings you the story of one of the little-known, almost unsung heroes of America's last frontier, Alaska. They are the bush pilots, the flyers who carry in supplies, who deliver the necessities of life to the people who are making Alaska. Our story opens in the home of Bill McNarney. Mrs. McNarney is at the microphone of the shortwave radio. It's a promise, Gail. Mac will fly those eggs up to you the first thing in the morning. Mom says we're going to have eggnog for the reception or there's to be no wedding. And I don't want the wedding postponed, Mrs. McNarney. Uh, Just a minute, Gail. Someone's at the door. Come in, please. I'm busy on the radio. All right, Gail. Don't you worry about a thing. The eggs will be there. Signing off, Gail. There's someone waiting. Uh, My name's Hughes. Uh, Is Mr. McNarney in? Oh, I'm glad to meet you. No, Max out flying. I'm Mrs. McNarney, his wife. Can I help you? I'll just send your husband runs an airline. Is this this kitchen his office? No, it's my office. Mac handles the flying. I'm sort of his uh, operations officer. Mm, I see. Two-way radio transmitter, two telephones, desk, filing cabinet, stove, sink, and icebox. Doesn't it interfere with your cooking? On the contrary, it's more convenient for me this way. Well, I'll say this is the best smelling office I've ever been in. That's the roast, Mac's favorite. That's an interesting map of Alaska on the wall. Never saw one like it before. It's Mac's work. He knows this country like you know the palm of your hand. He's marked landing sites on it. Not many airfields up here, and the weather... Well, Well, the weather, don't... Let's not talk about it. I won't be up here long, Mrs. McNarney. When can I see your husband? Uh, Excuse me a minute. Certainly. Hello? This is Mrs. McNarney. Who? Oh, the telephone exchange, yes. Judd Olson and Ofer is trying to reach me by radio? Oh, thank you very much. Yes, I know his wavelength. Uh, Sit down for a minute, Mr. Hughes. That rock is most comfortable. Mrs. McNarney calling Judd Olson. Judd Olson, come in. Where's Mac, Mrs. McNarney? Can he fly up here right away? Mac isn't here now, Judd. What's the trouble? Mrs. Olson's terrible sick. I've got to get to the hospital right away, Mrs. McNarney. It's the baby, I think. The baby? But it wasn't due until... Oh, Judd, I don't know if Mac can make it. He's been flying all day. But she'll die, Mrs. McNarney, if I can't get her to a hospital. Mac's just got to come for her. He's our only hope. All right, Judd, you sit tight. I'll try to contact Mac, but I can't promise anything. Signing off. Mrs. to Mac. Mrs. to Mac. Come in, Mac. Tell your husband I'm from the Air Surplus Property Division in Washington. I'll have to leave tonight. Oh, why didn't you say so before, Mr. Hughes? Oh, Mac's so anxious to get those planes. Mrs. to Mac, come in. Over. Mac to Mrs. Mac to Mrs. How's the roast beef? How's the roast beef? Where are you now, Mac? About 100 miles east of him. Say, do you know what Bill Holland wanted? A vulcanizing job on his false teeth. He was too embarrassed to tell you himself. Wasn't for you, Mac, and that gall darn plane of yours, I'd starve to death, he said. Hey, do me a favor, will you, honey? Hold up that roast to the radio so I can smell it. Over. Stop talking, Mac, and listen. Judd Olson just called from Ofer. His wife's in trouble. The baby's coming prematurely. He wants you to fly Mrs. Olson down to the hospital here. Hey, I'm sorry to hear that. She's lost two that way already, hasn't she? Yes, that's right. We don't want it to happen again. Now, look, Mac, the last weather report says there's a storm up there. Uh, it's snowing pretty heavy up here, too. I wonder... Yeah, it's a good thing I refueled at Fort Wilson. Hey, look, honey, you call Judd and tell him I'm going to try to get through. I'm banking off now. But there's a Mr. Hughes here from Washington about those planes you want to buy. He says he has to leave tonight. What's that? 
Hey, you'll be mighty nice to him. I need those planes. Let me talk to him. Are you still going up for Mrs. Olson, Mac? Sure, but I want to talk to Mr. Hughes. Put him on. Uh, here's the mic, Mr. Hughes. Hello, McNally. That's quite a stunt you're pulling. Huh? What are you talking about? Flying up for Mrs. Olson in a storm. Oh, that that's routine up here in Alaska, Mr. Hughes. It's always snowing, and somebody's always got to go to the hospital for something. If it isn't a baby, it's a trapper that got caught in his own bear trap. Say, but about those Hughes, those planes, Mr. Hughes, uh, when can I get them? I don't know, McNally. The department's not sold on the idea. Hey, now, wait a minute. You can't do that to me. Four surplus planes are the only ones I can get delivery on right away. I can't get any others. A lot of things have to be taken into consideration, McNally. That's why I'm here. What sort of things? I, can, I have more freight contracts than I can handle. I can get two hot pilots in Alaska if I can just get the planes for them. What else has to be taken into consideration? Use me for button in, Mac. But if it's credit this Mr. Hughes is worrying about, I want him to know I'll back you up to shovel handle. Hey, who's this busting in? Charlie Peters. Who in town you think it was? Now, look here, Charlie. I appreciate it, but I don't need credit. I have the cash. And this is a private conversation between Mr. Hughes and me. Mr. Hughes, look, how long can you stay? I've, I've got to leave tonight. Tonight? Now, wait a minute. I've got to talk to you, and I can't be home until, well, after 7 this evening. Over. But I'm flying out at 6, last plane. Oh, please, you've got to stay. I want to talk to you about those two cargo planes. It's impossible, Mr. McNarney. I can't stay. Look, I've got to make a run to Oprah. Mrs. Olson is having a baby, and I've got to get her into Fairbanks to hospital. If you'll promise to stay, I'll fly you to Fairbanks. You can get a plane back to the stage from there. How about it? But oh, I can... please, Mr. Hughes. Mac will get you there in time. Atta girl, Mrs. Mac. Let him smell that roast beef, honey. How about it, Mr. Hughes? Well, all right. Be here by seven, though. Can do. Roger. All from here. Well, I think I was talked into something. Oh, Mr. Hughes, he needs those planes. He's got two pilots for them, XGI. I, uh, Mrs. McNani, we're willing to sell your husband the planes, but we've got to know one thing. And that is? The division wants to know if those planes could be used to better advantage somewhere else. Oh, I see. You think bush piloting isn't important enough to rate those planes, is that it? I don't think anything, Mrs. McNani. I'm trying to find out. Of course. So far, delivering eggs doesn't sound important. And getting Mrs. Olson to the hospital in time? How about that? No, emergencies like that happen every day in the States. Of course. Well, how would you like to hear Mac's story? Oh, not only his, but the story of every bush pilot in Alaska. Oh, well, uh, just a moment. Uh, who made this map? Oh, Mac made that one, too. Shows all the fog-free areas. He made this himself? Yes. That map came in handy during the war. It did? How? Well, Mac was too old for service. He tried to get in, but he was turned down. And that map was the next best thing. You see, Mr. Hughes, the Alcon Highway was under construction. Army engineers needed maps of the fog-free areas, places where airfields could be put in. Mm-hmm. And Mac knew those places. And made that map. The Army had copies made and saved hours and hours of valuable time when we needed it most. Mac risked his life more than once getting to those areas to map them. I see. But what about that story you were going to tell me? Oh, come into the kitchen. I've got to look at the roast. Uh... You may be wondering about this radio, too. You see, shortwave radio is to us what the old party line was to the rural districts in the States. We get in touch with each other that way. Anyone who hasn't got a phone calls Central Exchange by radio. Then Exchange contacts me by phone, and I get in touch by radio. Mm-hmm. But what about Mac and those planes? Well, Mr. Hughes, we came up here to Alaska in 1921. Mac had been a flyer in France, like a lot of other boys. He couldn't settle down. He couldn't adjust himself right away. So after we were married, I found myself in Alaska. Well, honey, this is it. Alaska. Yes. Wonderful country. Is it, Mac? Sure, sure. Why, do you know what's in the lakes and streams, honey? Trout so big that nobody in the States would believe it. Ducks, geese, grouse. And ice. Well, there's otter, muskrat, and salmon. And cold and snow and fog. Oh, please, Mac. Don't sound like a guidebook. Talk like a husband. What do you mean, honey? Look, do you really want to live up here? Can we make a home? A real home? Why not? Well, there's nothing. Just nothing. Oh, there's nothing now, but there will be. Mac, I love you. I love you very much. I'd follow you to the ends of the earth. 
And I have. Oh, that sounds like my honey talking. Now, we'll get started on a house tomorrow. We'll stay in the hotel like move into our own place. Believe me, honey, you'll love it up here. It's just a question of getting used to it. That's all. How's it going, honey? I kind of like it, Max. Sure. Mush! Mush! Whoa! Whoa! What's the matter? Give me those field glasses. Here, but why... Oh, just, just a second. I... I don't think I'm seeing things, but you better take a look way over there on the side of that hill. Mac, well, that's firewood. And does it spell out what I think it does? Yes. It spells help. That's what I thought. Mush! Mush! What do you think it is? I don't know, honey, but nobody would do a thing like that if it wasn't necessary. People just don't kid about things like that. Hi! Mush! Hi! Oh, be careful, Mac. The sled won't stand it. It's got him. Hold tight, honey. Mush! Hi! Is it locked? Yeah. Can you see in the windows? No, they're all frosted over. No fire inside. Well, here goes. What are you going to do? Well, if somebody needed help badly enough to spell it out in cordwood, they needed out they needed badly enough for me to break down this door. Look, look out, honey. Mac. Look. Holy mackerel. Quick, get a fire going in the stove. Uh, are they dead? No, no, they're not. Hurry up with that fire, honey, and get some hot water ready. Get a couple of cans of soup and get all the robes and furs we got on the sled. All right. Wake up. Come on. Wake up. Uh, poor... Oh, it's all right now. You saw your signal. Uh, Kitty. Kitty. She's okay. She's alive. Uh, Kitty, don't, I... don't, don't try to talk now. We're, we're getting a fire started. We'll have some hot soup in a minute. How's it coming, honey? The fire's going. I'll have the soup in a second. Good. Uh, uh, Take it easy. Take it easy. Everything's going to be all right. She... She'll be all right, won't she, Mr. McNarney? Sure. My wife will see to her. Thank God you saw our signal. Yeah. Uh, what happened, Mr. Moran? Bears broke into our food. Ate it. And blizzard. We're snowed in. Here, take some more soup. Is she eating, honey? Yes, she'll be all right. Swell. Uh, then what, Mr. Moran? I, I tried to get the bears, followed by sled. Got caught in muskeg. Muskeg? Oh, muskeg swamp. Broke through. Lost my two dogs. Hurt my leg. Oh, I see. Well, better not try to talk anymore. My wife and I will stay with you till both of you can make it into the settlement. God bless you, Mr. McNulty. Well, we're going to be neighbors, you know. Our land's right over the ridge, about five miles in. My kitty will be glad to hear that. It's kind of lonely for her alone. Sure. Now, you get some sleep. I'll patch up that door meanwhile. Thanks. I, I can use sleep. How is she, honey? Sleepy. Close call. Lucky they saw our signal. Yes. Lucky. Very lucky. What's the matter? Well, why'd you say it like that? Oh, nothing, Matt, nothing. Well, now, wait a minute, hon. Something's up. What is it? I don't want to say anything. But you do. You've got something on your chest. Get it off, honey. No, not here. Not now. But why beat around the bush? What's, what's wrong? All right, I'll tell you. You said they were lucky. That's right, Matt. So lucky. But suppose they hadn't been. What do you mean? Well, suppose we hadn't come along when we did. Maybe an hour later, or even a half hour. Oh, I see. But, but, but we didn't, honey. We didn't. Mac, don't you see? This, well, we might have been these people. Yes, that's true. We, we might have been. But this is no place for us or for them. I want to go home, Mac. Back home to the States. You've had your adventure. You've had your fling at wandering. Now let's settle down and, and lead normal lives. Mrs. Mack, I love you very much. But I want to tell you something right now. This isn't an adventure for me. This isn't just a, a fling. This, this is what I want, darling. I want it because it's all new in a wonderful country that can grow. And look at those two poor creatures lying there. 
Is this country wonderful for them? Yes. That's why they're here. Nevada or Oklahoma or Texas was wonderful for the first pioneers there. And this is America's last frontier. You want to stay there? Yes. After seeing this? After seeing this. No matter what I say? No, that's not fair. It's, it's not like you to force that kind of a decision. Well, is it fair to ask me to stay? Honey, that's a question you'll have to answer for yourself. You are listening to Dick Foran and Gail Page as Mr. and Mrs. Mack in Alaskan Bush Pilots on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Mrs. Mack has just told Mr. Hughes about her own and Mack's first experiences in Alaska. Now as the second part of our story opens, Hughes and Mrs. Mack are in the living room of the McNarney home. Hughes is speaking. And you stayed, didn't you? <laughs> Mr. Hughes, I think I caught Mack's enthusiasm. You uh, like Alaska now? I wouldn't live anywhere else on Earth. I see. Well, what about the flying, bush piloting? Well, Mr. Hughes, I... Oh, excuse me. Mrs. Mack here... Oh, thank you. Now, I will... Excuse me again. Mrs. Mack calling Judd Olson at Ophir. Mrs. McNarney calling Judd Olson at Ophir. Come in, Judd. That's the man whose wife's having... Shh. Judd Olson here. Where's Mack? Isn't he coming? Please, he's got her. Now, Judd, don't get excited. Mack should be on his way there by now. How's Mrs. Olson? Not good, Miss Mack. Not good at all. And, I... and I'm scared. Scared stiff. And there's a blizzard heading for us. Max flown through blizzards before, Judd. Lots of them. He'll get through to you. Now, you go back and stay with Mrs. Olson. Don't leave her, Judd. Do you hear? Don't leave her. I hear you, but what'll I do? Look, Judd, get blankets and everything ready. Be ready with Mrs. Olson as soon as Mac gets there. Hear? Yeah, all right, but look, tell him he can't land on the backfield. He's got to land on the lake. I think the ice will hold. All from here. You going to try to get Mac? No, I won't bother him. If he wants me, he'll call in. He knows I'll be here. Listen. I, I see. But you want to know about Max starting this bush piloting. Well, Mr. Hughes, it, it wasn't long after what I told you about the Morans that Mac came in one evening looking like a cat in the <laughs> Mr. Mac. Mr. Mac. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> what's the matter, honey? I don't know. What is the matter? Matter? Why, honey, there's nothing the matter. Mac, I... look at me. No, right at me. Now, what did you do? Holy mackerel, Mrs. Mac. Do I look like I did something? Yes, exactly. Okay, okay. Uh, honey, I... Well, look, remember the Morans? Remember? I've never forgotten. I can't. Neither could I. That's why I did what I did. What did you do? What about the Morans? Well, it's not about the Morans, not, not only the Morans, I mean. It's about the Wallaces and the Orkoffs and the Rolands and, well, all of those families in the inland country. Alaska's a wonderful country and it needs people, pioneers, just like... Texas, Oklahoma, Nevada, I know. Sure. Now, now, what keeps people from settling in a wonderful country? Tell me. You tell me. Well, all right. It's the lack of facilities, uh, transportation, ways to get supplies and necessities in and out. But... Mac, you bought a plane. How did you know? Well, there's only one way you think of getting things in and out, by plane. You're wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Mac, darling, you're incorrigible. <laughs> And he did just what he said he was going to do, Mr. Hughes. He and the other bush pilots kept Alaska alive through the people they served. Mm hmm. Back to Mrs. Yes. Back to Mrs. You there? Yes, right here. What's the matter? Uh, look, honey, I landed at Olson's place. Made it on the ice. Oh, good. What about Mrs. Olson? Well, that's what I wanted to tell you. Now, now, listen. This is going to be one of those things. She's, she's, well, you know. Is it bad, Mac? Well, I, I don't know, but you better get to the airport. Call Dr. Stern. Get him there. Ambulance and all. Got it? I've got it. Mac, be careful. Sure, sure. Always am. Hey, honey, uh, Mr. Hughes still there? Yes, I'm here. Swell. Now, now, don't go away. If you do, you'll miss the best roast beef in the world. Besides, uh, I want to talk to you about those planes. All right, I'll be here. Be at the airport. Uh, oh, uh, honey, 
Right here, Mac. Uh, I'll have to land on the snow. I can't stop to change from skis to wheel. Got a tailwind. It's terrific. Uh, better get going to the airport. All for now. I'll go right away. You want to come along, Mr. Hughes? <laughs> Hi, Miss Mac. Hello, Bob. Oh, this is Mr. Hughes. Place major, Mr. Hughes. How do you do? Uh-huh. Mac coming in? Not on the runway. He's got skis on the ship. Oh, we better get flares out. Yes, I want to use the phone, Bob. Yeah, sure thing. Right here in the radio shack. Excuse me, Mr. Hughes. I've got to call the hospital. There's a great little woman. You've known the McNownies very long? About a year now. I'm one of the pilots he's trying to get a plane for. Oh, I see. You've done much flying? All over the Aleutians, Alaska, clear down to the Kuriels, drop a few on the Japs there. Look, uh, this bush piloting, is it just delivering little things, errands, stuff like that? You kidding? Look, you ever hear of Kalma Tungsten? Who hasn't? Well, Mac's been taking that tungsten out now for 25 years. Oh? How do you know? Because Mr. Peters, he owns the mine, he told me. He told me how one day he was sitting in a saloon at Fairbanks. He said Mac came up to him. Excuse me, uh, are you Charlie Peters? Yeah. What's on your mind? An idea. I think I can do something for you. Why? What's in it for you? You want to hear it or not? I'm listening to it. Bill McNarney's my name. You got a claim up Salcher River of tungsten used in hardening steel? Interested in buying it? No. I just wanted to know why you haven't worked it. Takes eight days to get there by dog sled. Worst country up here. No way of getting the ore out. That answer your question? I can get you there in half an hour, and I can haul the ore down here in the same time. If you were drinking, I'd order the same stuff. But you ain't. Ever hear of airplanes? You figured on flying the ore out? Alaska is rich if we can get the richness and haul it out, right? Well, an airplane will do it. What'll it cost? $25 to take you up there and 25 cents a pound for freight. Eh, maybe I'm a darn fool, but it's a deal. When can we leave? Tomorrow morning. The plane's in Granger's barn, north side of Fairbanks. I'll be there at six. There it is, right along the Satch River. There's a the hill. <laughs> this is it. Yeah, it took 40 minutes. Would have been 30 if you'd been able to recognize your own mind. Uh, it looks different from the air. Okay, strap yourself in. We're going down. All right, I'm ready. Hey, Charlie. How soon do you think you can have that load of ore ready to take out? Well, give me two weeks. Two weeks it is. I'll be right here on schedule. You better be. This ain't no place to be stranded. Don't you worry. You'll be here and have the ore ready, and I'll take it out for you. Well, Mac, if it works, you can bring me back a couple of helpers your next trip. It'll work, all right. When I come back, have a list of supplies and equipment you'll need. All right, Mac, and you be careful. Because if anything happens to you, <laughs> I'm a dead duck. <laughs> Well, Mr. Hughes, that was about, oh, I guess about... Twenty-five years ago. Hiya, Charlie. Meet Mr. Hughes. I know. I'm from Washington about those plane mac ones. You gonna get him, Mr. Hughes? How do you know about me? Radio up here is like party line. We hear everything. <laughs> is Mac gonna get those planes? Well, Now, I... looky here. He's never failed me once. Twenty-five years he's been taking my ore out. Never failed anyone. From freighting in gas engines to a can of milk. We needed every ounce of tungsten we could lay our hands on after Pearl Harbor. Is that right? Well, there wouldn't have been any Cal McTunson. It hadn't been for Mac. I reached the... Oh, hello, Charlie. Yeah. The ambulance is ready, standing by. Hey, i got to set the flare. There he is now. Yeah, yeah, he's coming in. Hey, is that his plane? That's it, Mr. Hughes. Why, why, it's hardly bigger than a cub. Hey, you see that landing, Hughes? Like a southern breeze. Oh, thank heaven. Hey, doctor! He's right here, Mac. Come on, doctor. Hey, bring a stretcher over here and step on it. Everything okay, Mac? From here on in, it's up to you, doc. All right, boys. Lift her into the ambulance. How are you, Mrs. Olson? Uh, I don't know what we'd have done without Mac. You're all right now. We'll be at the hospital in a minute. But Judd, where's Judd? Oh, he's okay. Ever know me to lose a father? There we are. All right, boys, let's go. Well, that's that. Now, hiya, honey. How's the roast beef? Fine. How are you? Okay. We just had a bad tailwind. Now, let's talk about them planes. Now, just a minute, Peters. No, now, look, we need those planes. You're a flyer, not a businessman. No, I well, mean, I've been... Uh, just a moment. Uh, I'm Hughes. Uh, may I say something? I... Well, sure, Mr. Hughes, go right ahead. Mac, I'm going back to Washington, and I'll guarantee you those planes, as many as you need. I... Well, thanks, Mr. Hughes. You don't know how much it means. I think I do, Mac. Not only to you, but to Alaska and Alaska's people. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. That's a load off my mind. Hey, Bob. Yeah, Mac. 
Give the old crate a going over and get the ice off the wings. We've got to get those eggs delivered in the morning. You see, Mr. Hughes, when you're a bush pilot, you're everything, including a stork. Dick Foran and Gail Page will return to our DuPont Cavalcade microphone in a moment. Now, here is Gain Whitman. No matter what other odd kinds of cargo an Alaskan bush pilot may have in his plane, he may also be carrying a box of dynamite to somebody somewhere. For pioneering Americans are building the Alaska of tomorrow, and dynamite is a building tool, first and last. In fact, no other tool can do so much work so cheaply, whether it's blasting mountainsides for a highway or digging a mile-long drainage ditch. Dynamite is not a wartime explosive. Dynamite is as constructive as peace itself, as every construction engineer knows. Dynamite has become a money-saving, labor-saving, time-saving friend, valuable and trustworthy, because it is a scientific explosive. For a long while, black powder was the only known explosive. Alfred Nobel, however, conceived the idea of mixing nitroglycerin with solid material to make it safer to handle, safer to use. Both his idea and his method were scientific. And today, the manufacture of dynamite has become a scientific field in itself. The DuPont Company, for instance, today manufactures not just one type, but nearly 200 formulations of dynamite. Through exact control of the ingredients and their compounding, DuPont can make a dynamite that will crack solid granite like the blow of a giant fist, or one that gives a coal seam a gentle heave so that the coal is dislodged without shattering. DuPont makes a dynamite for an Alaskan gold mine that will not freeze in sub-zero temperatures, or a dynamite that may be used with equal efficiency in the blazing heat of the tropics. Wherever there is heavy work to be done, especially where the job calls for the moving of large amounts of earth or stone, there you find dynamite made by the DuPont Company, saving time, saving labor, labor which, without dynamite, would more often than not be backbreaking. DuPont Dynamite builds roads and dams, helps mine coal and ores. DuPont Dynamite digs ditches and removes stumps for farmers. In a split second, it does the work that would otherwise take weeks and months. Dynamite well deserves its place among the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Not bad, Gain. Not bad for Chechico. Don't let that throw you, Gain. Dick's still playing Mac in Alaskan lingo. Oh, I see. Well, what would be Alaskan lingo for a woman who followed her husband from a rough, lonely army outpost where he was a lieutenant into the White House, where he became president of the United States? Well, I don't know the Alaskan for it, Gain, but that sounds like the story of Zachary Taylor's wife, Meg. And it sounds like a wonderful part for somebody. And that somebody, Dick, will be Agnes Moorhead. Coming on Cavalcade next week? Right. We hope that you and Dick will be listening, Gail, for The General's Wife. If Agnes Moorhead is on, no one should miss it. Once again, Dick, we agree. Good. Get seats in front of your radios and Cavalcade will be there. When oh, incidentally, while we're talking about fine acting, there's a big bouquet of orchids due each of you tonight for your performances. Thanks, Dick Ferran and Gail Page. Please come again. We, we will. will. Good night. Good night. Dick Ferran may soon be seen in the Paramount picture, Too Good to be True. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our Cavalcade play was written by Bernard Fines and Harold Franklin. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next week to The General's Wife, starring Agnes Moorhead, on The Cavalcade of America. Brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.